Hello Oracles! Today I'm going to go over my production forecast for Q3. We are looking at record numbers coming out this weekend. Very excited to share them with you guys. So when we get them out this weekend, I will definitely jump on to go over all of them with you and discuss what we came up with, where we landed, what we had for deliveries, production, and what we can see going forward. So as far as the stock goes today, I'm sure many of you saw it was not a pretty day in the market. The stock was down 6.81%, significantly underperforming the rest of the market. The S&P was down 2.11%, and the NASDAQ was down 2.84%. So Tesla, if you had paid attention to some of the numbers we had been discussing, 265 was the next level that I was looking at for us to bounce off of. Today we bounced off of just above $265. So again, we're going to pay attention to this tomorrow. We do have Fed Brainerd coming out, and she is usually pretty dovish. So we'll see what she has to say. And then, of course, we've got a AI Day 2022 going on. I'll be over at my Tesla weekend, so I will share that link with you guys as soon as Brian sends it over to me. Very excited about this. But we also know historically, the market doesn't really understand what happens at these days, so we didn't get a run-up. Obviously, we didn't get a run-up into the event, so it's not like we're going to have a, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news situation. But because of the fact that the market isn't going to understand it, if we end up just coming in line with expectations for production and deliveries over the weekend, we might see a further sell-off on Monday. Just saying, you know, I would love for us to go green. I truly do, not trying to spread FUD. But looking at the fact that in the charts, we're pulling down, we have been pulling down, very heavy macro environment going on. We have a new quarter starting on Monday, but if there's not anything really good as far as a catalyst goes to drive the company forward and the stock price up, on Monday, we might not see that. Record numbers are gonna be awesome. I have a feeling we're going to hit record numbers either way when it comes to this. But if the market is expecting certain numbers and analysts are expecting 357,000 and we just get it, it could be very similar to what we saw in Q2. Q2, we expected numbers to be where they were. They fell right in line. Stock did nothing. So just anticipating this potential could be happening on Monday. Not sure, hey, maybe because of the fact that it's a new quarter and we've had a massive sell-off recently, maybe there's a lot of buying going on. Don't know either way, I know. It's wishy-washy, but I just try to give you guys all the different insights that I see that could happen on either direction. And then when it comes to falling further, potentially, we have the S&P right now that landed at 3640. We have a lot of talks about the S&P pulling down to that 3570 to 3580 mark. So if we do end up pulling down, this could be the potential for us to fill those gaps at 247 and 258. So today, as per my plan, I added $25 at the $267 mark. Next level for me is going to be 258, and I will add more at that level if we pull down to there. So that's just the chart. That's what I saw for the day today. And now the volume today was back to that normal level at 77 million shares trading hands. Previously before the split, we were around that 25 to 26 million share range to be normal on our average. So we're back to that average. So being average on a red day, not the greatest thing. And the RSI has pulled down to 39. So again, just paying attention to this again, back in the spring when we had some massive FUD and big selling off going on across the entire market, Tesla did pull down to the low 30s with the RSI. So if we are going to follow that trend, we could potentially pull down further before we end up rebounding. We did get a nice rebound last time. And again, to me, these are the awesome buying opportunities, which is why I am scooping more up. All right, so now to jump into the production forecast for this weekend. So for me, production and deliveries are about the same. You know, Troy Teslake and Tesla Karav are so accurate with their numbers. For me to really try to dive in and spend all that time and effort really doesn't seem worth it because they can do it. But I do pay attention to all the production numbers because for me, production is where my entire valuation model starts. So I start it from there and I assume with demand being the way it is, they're basically going to be selling every single vehicle that they produce. And we got some information from Troy Teslake today discussing how the China numbers are probably going to end up being lower because a lot of them are anticipating a price reduction coming on October 1st. And very much like here in the US with the EV tax credit, many people are looking to push their deliveries off until next year. This seems like what's going on over in Shanghai at the moment, so people are pushing deliveries off. Now, don't forget, though, they did start exports earlier this quarter. Usually, they start exports again on the 26th of the month. This time, they started it on the 21st of the month. So they probably anticipated the fact that there was a lot less domestic deliveries going on. And don't forget, there's a lot more countries in the Asia-Pacific region right now that do sell Teslas. You know, Australia, New Zealand came online. We've got Singapore. So all of these countries just came online for Tesla. So they've got a lot more places they can deliver locally rather than shipping them all the way over to 
to Europe. So they had a better opportunity to actually get these deliveries out. We'll see if these ships ended up landing to see if you know they're gonna be added into this quarter's deliveries or if they're gonna be next quarter, but being a lot closer sounds like there's a better chance of all of these deliveries actually happening. So with China itself falling behind with demand, was Tesla still able to make up that ground by delivering these vehicles exported locally around the country in that Asia Pacific region? We'll find out this weekend, but at least he was able to confirm that. And then my question is, we had the 10,000 vehicles carrying over from the July inventory to August and then into September. And if production has been ramping up the way it is, we were most likely going to be seeing a higher inventory getting carried over into Q4 as well. So is this inventory going to get carried into Q4 and then potentially push us to that 500,000 vehicle delivery level in Q4? Or did they end up delivering those vehicles exported locally over there in the Asia Pacific region. Again, all these questions will be answered this weekend, but these are just the things that I played out in my forecast for this weekend, which is why I still keep my production and deliveries the same, because I think Tesla has been able to pull off a higher than expected delivery number for Q3 based upon these few things. So going over my production numbers in particular, I've got Fremont producing 137,500 vehicles. I've got Shanghai producing 203,977. 88,653 of those were in September alone. I've got Austin producing 12,300, and I've got Berlin producing 15,335 vehicles, with a grand total of 369,112 vehicles being produced for Q3. So now again, there was a lot of downtime that we had had, and I was a little bit more aggressive on my end. Originally, I had them pushing closer to 400,000, but then we had some more downtime and some other things going on. We also heard that Shanghai is only producing at 93% capacity at the moment. So due to all of these things, I brought it down to that 369,000 vehicle level. And so to break it down by model, I have the S and the X production coming out of Fremont at 23,420 vehicles. I've got the Model 3 at 115,230 total company-wide. And for the Model Y, I have them coming in at 230,461. We know that the Model Y has been their biggest focus for the entire quarter and the entire year, trying to get that ramped up as much as they can. So we look like we are producing about two thirds of the vehicles coming out of Shanghai are Model Ys and one third are Model 3s. So I adjusted that into my numbers and we obviously know that Austin and Berlin are all Model Ys at the moment. So that is where I came up with these numbers. So now comparing this to Q2, Model 3 and Model X, they had 16,411 vehicles being produced and there were 242,169 Model 3 and Y produced for a total of 258,580 for the quarter. So going quarter over quarter, that is going to be a 42.7% growth over Q1, which because Q1 was the previous record, that's still going to be a 20.8% growth over that quarter. And then over Q3 of 2021, we are looking at a 55.2% growth. So is still going quarter from last year to quarter of this year, that is still over a 50% growth. So yes, 50% growth is still happening within the company based upon my projections. And so again, we will go over all the final numbers when they come in on this weekend. They should be out on Sunday morning. So uh, it, the time depends. Sometimes it comes out but at nine o'clock. Sometimes it was 11. I think last time it was like 10, 30 or 11 o'clock in the morning that the numbers finally came out. I will do my best to get out the numbers in a video to you guys to break it all down for you. Um, depending on what time I get my son, maybe later in the day. Either way, on Sunday, I will be getting you guys a video to go over all of the numbers. And I will also start breaking down all the power walls and mega packs that are coming out because I don't think Tesla is going to be breaking that down anytime soon. Hopefully they do. Maybe we'll get it on the whole Q3 earnings when we get those numbers that come out. But looking in, doing a follow-up with some of the stuff that we heard about going over in Hawaii, thank you guys for responding and letting me know the feedback from over there. Sounds like the island is really looking forward to this. They're excited about having the mega packs coming in over there. Looks like Kauai is already online. Lots of solar fields that are coming out over there. So this is a great transition. The biggest complaint that I had heard from all of you guys, and I did reach out to Elon today, I'm gonna harp on it because I know I'm a small guy, he's probably not paying attention, but I will keep on harping on it for you guys is the, all the superchargers. They do not have enough superchargers over in Hawaii. This is a great transition that they're making, but they need more superchargers. So I'll keep pushing this because right now it's looking like their gas prices over there are over $7 a gallon. So this is absolutely insane. I remember when I was there, you know, 20 years ago, gas prices were so much higher than everywhere else because you figured you've got to import it from everything. Everything gets imported there for the most part. 
So getting this over there up and running is really going to be a game changer for all of them. So I'm going to keep harping on it and hopefully we'll get some over there. I know that Elon previously had said that they're really looking globally at the areas that need superchargers the most. So I have no doubt with mega packs going over there, that will be the next phase. I also heard that over in Palawan in the Philippines, they've got mega packs up and running, which have significantly reduced all the blackouts that they are having as well. Awesome news to hear that. So thank you guys so much for sharing this because again, to me, the energy is the big one. And again, this has been the company's mission statement all along, which is changing the world over to renewable, sustainable energy. And this is where we're moving. We're starting to see this happening and we're starting to see the massive, excellent benefits from this. We also got some reports about, you know, the solar roof that they have down in Florida and handling Hurricane Ian without a problem and withstanding all of that. So again, all of these things moving in the right direction, because yes, bat power walls and mega packs, that is just energy storage. It's not producing energy unless the power goes out. So now we can see anybody who has power walls going on down in Florida, how this is going to be a game changer. We've also heard from Elon about you know Starlink teaming up with T-Mobile to be able to handle situations like this. When the power is all out everywhere, can they still have connectivity with the outside world during emergency situations? We're going to start seeing a lot of these things coming into effect very soon. So awesome news to hear about all of this, guys. So thank you all for sharing. So there it is, all my forecasts for this weekend coming out, and I will be updating all of my numbers after we get the true numbers that are coming out on Sunday. And I'll give you guys an update and my Q4 numbers after that as well. So again, let me know if any of you guys are in Florida or anywhere else around the world where you've got power walls or mega packs and anything else energy-wise coming in that is making a huge difference. And let me know if you guys in Florida, if you have been hit by the hurricane and you are able to respond to this, let me know how it's going with you guys. Do you have power walls? Do you have a solar roof? How are the things handling down there when it comes to Tesla, renewable energy, and all of that? How are we transitioning? Because this is the big test. These are the big tests that are going on right now is emergency situations. This is where these things are going to come into play. So let me know if you guys have been affected by any of that and what you have seen from it. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. If you found value in this video, please consider sharing it with others. We do have a membership program. I will be sharing all of my price targets, all of my production and delivery forecasts for you there in my valuation models, depending on what level you you choose to go with. I am over on Twitter at Oracle Tim one I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat. That link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon. That link is also in the description. Thank you so much. Have a great one.